Hi, I'm Julia with Pupwell, and we are going to give you our crash course today on Doodle Coats 101 and genetics. This is going to break down whether a dog has a curly coat, a wavy coat, or a straight coat, and how to decipher, and just a little bit more about doodle breeds and their generations. What a curly coat looks like, what a wavy, what a straight coat, what a flat coat looks like, so that you can see and better understand what your dog's coat is. Poodle has a curly coat. A curly coat, we're gonna give two pluses. That means they've got this tight curl. They've got two of those genes. These are our genes. So curly gene, we've got two curls. Now this is another gene that's really important and it's called the furnishings gene. And they have two big Fs. And to have the furnishings gene, you need to have at least one big F, but purebred poodles are going to typically have like 99% of the time, two big Fs. So a furnishings gene is Kind of the mustache and the beard and the eyebrows of your dog so when i talk about the curl we're talking about this part of the coat we're talking about what that is like and then the furnishings is going to be around the mouth on the eyebrows it's what makes the hair grow so other breeds will have this such as a shih tzu or a yorkshire terrier but because we're doing doodles we're focusing on the poodle so who's going to be important on coat dog is going to be like a golden retriever bernese mountain dog australian shepherd so many more, but they do not have a curl. It is a straight gene, so they get two negatives. And then furnishings, they do not have any, and we call that a flat coat. So they get mini Fs, lowercase Fs. A short coat is gonna be the same. They've got no curl, it's straight, no furnishings gene, but these are going to not have long hair, but short hair such as a Lab, a Basset Hound, or a Great Dane. Typically, we really only see like a lab for doodle when it comes to short coats. The first generation of golden or of doodles is our F1, first generation. And they are always going to have that wavy coat because we're gonna get a, we're gonna take one gene from the parent of the poodle and get a plus. Then we're gonna take one from that short or long coat and that's a negative. So we're gonna get negative and a plus, which makes a wavy, nice wavy coat. Then dogs only need one furnishings gene. Remember that, that's why it's important. They need at least one to get that fluffy face. Now there's something called a weak furnishings gene and that is where they do not get as fluffy as a face. It almost looks like a flat coat and I'm gonna share both of those here. F1B is a safe breed it starts to um, infuse the breed a little bit more with poodle. You're basically 75% poodle to 25% whatever other dog it is. And so they're less likely to shed and they're always going to have the furnishings gene. Now an F2 is back to that first generation, that first cross, you cross those again. Typically breeders don't do this because it will likely end up in a coat that has not the furnishings gene. And we call that a flat coat. F1 BB goes back to that F1 B bred back to a poodle. We're gonna see a full litter of curly coats, full litter of furnished dogs. An F1 B can have that negative, that straight coat um, gene. And so you can sometimes get a wavy F1 BB. Multi-generational golden doodles, or doodles, sorry, multi-generational doodles are more popular, but there are lots of varies here. These are becoming more popular because they are more consistent in their coats and their textures, their tights. Plus what a multi-generational dog is, at least two generations of, let's say we've created an F1B, which is an F1, bred back to the poodle again. So now we're at second generation. What we like to see are more generations bred down, six, seven, eight, and we're seeing more and more of that as doodles have become more popular and they've been around longer. So this is the money spot for any breeder. They really want that straight wavy coat. That's just because it is so much easier to maintain their grooming needs. You get a prettier coat, less wiry. Um, work with a breeder that knows how to do genetic testing and does genetic testing so that they can give you that final result even before the puppies are born. But if you have a dog, you are also able to do genetic testing yourself. There's Embark, which is the easiest one. Um, you just swab your dog's mouth and they will send you back the results of what your dog carries. There's so much more that goes to genetics, but this is the majority of what you as an owner would want to know. 